Hey everybody. Today, I'm going to be making this small spider out of glass. The spider I have chosen is a golden orb weaver, more commonly known here in Florida as a banana spider. This kind of subject is perfect for developing your sculpting skills in glass. You'll be required to replicate specific shapes and color schemes and develop a plan for the construction of the piece. It's a small construction, so it should not take too long to make, and if you mess up, it's no big deal. Best of all, these types of small constructions are fun and extremely satisfying when you succeed. The banana spider is a large, distinctly colored spider with long banded legs and a distinctive pattern of spots on its body. These spiders are common in the woods and hammocks of Central Florida, and nearly everyone who lives here can tell you a story or two about accidentally walking into one of their very large webs strung between the trees. The first step is to find some references. Although I see these spiders nearly every day in the summer, I still need photos for reference. Here are the ones I came up with. I like to arrange these photos so I can print them on a single sheet of paper that I can set near my workbench for quick and easy referral. Now I have to choose colors. It was difficult for me to select the color for the abdomen. It varies in the photographs from a pale yellowish to a deep ochre color. It looks a lot like butterscotch to me, but that color tends to strike a bit too dark. I finally settled on this yellowish green semi-opaque color from Glass Alchemy called Antidote. I decided that I would roll it in Silver Strike 3 powder to take the edge off the brightness and to give it a more natural texture. For the white, I chose North Star's Star White. It's a fairly dense color that will melt in smoothly. For the black, I chose North, North Star's Tag Color Blackjack. It's a striking black that is not as dense as some of the other common blacks, but the main reason I chose it is because its viscosity is similar to the color I chose for the legs. North Star's Butterscotch. The seals on the banded legs will be much cleaner and easier if the viscosities of the two glasses match. Finally, for the cephalothorax, that's the combination of the head and thorax unique to spiders, I chose Glass Alchemy's Portland Gray, and I'm going to roll it in their snow white powder. That was as close to the reference as I thought I could get. Now let's decide on a plan of construction. The banana spider spends most of its time hanging out in its web with its legs splayed out more or less symmetrically. That makes this subject a perfect candidate for what I call radial progression. This means that I'll begin with the central body parts and then build outward, progressing my heat radially from the center out. Once I'm working just on the tips of the legs, I will no longer have to keep the body hot, and I can simply complete the piece without reheating. So I will begin with the abdomen. I gather up some of the antidote and shape it roughly into an oval and then I roll it in the Silver Strike powder once and melt that in. I shape the abdomen according to my reference. I flatten the bottom a bit, and I make one end broader than the other. The handle on the rear of the cephalothorax will become the project handle. Now I will attempt to recreate the pattern of white dots on the top of the abdomen. There's a concentration of white near the front of the abdomen, as well as two rows of larger dots that are surrounded by a random pattern of smaller dots.
There is a kind of cap of black at the front of the abdomen where it joins the cephalothorax. Now I will make the cephalothorax. It is made of Portland gray, covered by about four dips of snow white powder. The cephalothorax has a distinctive pattern of black dots that some people think resembles a human skull. I apply these using a blackjack stringer. Now it is time to join the two main body parts. In my references, I notice that the abdomen overhangs the cephalothorax a bit creating a sharp cliff-like transition between the two parts. I make the seal at the bottom front of the abdomen to create this feature. And then I use my mini torch to clean up the seal. I add the eyes, chelicera, and pedipalps, all using blackjack. That's right, knowing a little about spider anatomy will help enormously. The eight legs of the spider are all connected to the cephalothorax. They are not connected to the abdomen. Therefore, the connection bits all have to fit on that small part of the body. This is a tight squeeze to say the least. I do it in two steps. The first is to add a small dab of blackjack stringer in the locations of each connection point. Then I come back and add more stringer to each connection point so I will have an easy place to seal on the leg. I try to make the connection points all the same size and level with each other. Now it is time to add the first segment of the legs. Curiously, the segments of the leg are called the same anatomical name as human legs. This first segment is the femur. It will be made of butterscotch. I add these segments as symmetrically as I can. I will add all eight femurs before proceeding with the next segment. The second segment is called the patella and will be made of blackjack. In the reference photos, I note that the black segments are a bit thicker than the yellow segments. This is because those segments are covered with very fine hairs. These are impossible to replicate in glass, so I will simply rely on the color difference to carry the imagery successfully. A 
At this point, I no longer have to go back into the body to keep it hot. The third segment, called the tibia, is very short and made of butterscotch. There are a number of prominent flame workers who specialize in insects, and I make this video with apologies to them. I love doing it, and so will you, but mine do not measure up to the quality of these artists, and neither will yours, at least not for a while. For inspiration, I suggest you check out their work. Emmanuel Tofolo, Vittorio Costantini, Wesley Fleming, Mike Mangiafico, and Jessica Tai. Links are in the description. The fourth segment is called the metatarsus and is black. I continue to try to maintain symmetry as I go, planning to adjust the position of the legs later. The fifth segment is called the tarsus and is made of butterscotch. The last segment is called the tarsal claw, and it will be black. I draw this segment out to a nice tapered point. Finally, I carefully remove my project handle, cleaning off the rear of the abdomen when I am done. The spider will be annealed now. I will fine tune the leg positions once it's cool. Okay, I will now make the final adjustments to the leg positions. I want the spider's legs to remain splayed out more or less evenly in all directions, but to have some curvature in them to create a more lifelike feel in the piece. I can easily heat the places where the different segments of the legs are joined with no danger of cracking. The thin stringer just does not hold enough stress to break. As long as I don't heat the body, I should be able to work as long as I want to get the pose that I want.
The last step is to set the spider down on a flat surface and heat a joint in each leg to make sure all the legs touch the surface. Then, a quick annealing cycle completes the job. And we are done. As I stated earlier, these types of small sculptures are fast, fun, and extremely satisfying. I hope you learned something today. Please send me images of your spiders. I'll post the best ones on my Instagram. If you enjoyed this video, please take the time to hit the like button and be sure to subscribe if you have not done so already. Thanks for watching and we'll see you all next time.